Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Cooking with the Colonel. Oh, hey! Didn't even see you there. How are you? <laughs> that was all your idea. That, that was just idea. Uh, that was fan uh -huh. service. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so today, this is one of my wife's, the Ravishing Mrs. Ritter. This is one of her favorite meals. You like this meal too, Ben? I love this meal. Okay. So we're gonna make, okay, so let me, follow me here now. So this is, this is my interpretation of my mom, Phyllis Stokes, always tender cube steak, which is an homage to her sister, my Aunt Carolyn, who originally showed her the idea. So it's a variation of a variation of the original, which I'm sure she got it from my grandma. Confused now. <laughs> okay. It's cube steak. Easy, easy. So we've got two pounds of cube steak here, salt, pepper, teriyaki sauce. We've got beef stock, some flour, and carrots. And carrots. So mom mom made it with onions. My wife doesn't like it with onions. Ergo, we don't like it with onions. I actually don't like it with onions. Really? Yeah. Okay, so that's two out of four, so that's a... Uh, Majority. My okay. vote counts for two. So. Oh, well, does it? <laughs> yes. No, really, because you all get one vote. I get four votes. But mine counts double. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Okay. So um, we're going to make this real quick. You hear the music? Yes. Do you know who that is? Some composer. It's Chopin. It's because we're going to be doing some chopping. Chopin. C-H-O-P-I-N. Chopping. <laughs> I've been saving that one all day long. No? I mean, you no. probably woke up and you're like, I, I did. I know! <laughs> it's all so good. We need to make a video! <laughs> <laughs> this whole video is an excuse to make that joke. It, is, it was, that's it. So I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah, okay, so. I usually uh, have a little music going in there, but I don't want to distract myself because I might burn my finger or cut my finger <laughs> off. So I'm actually not going to be doing any chopping because this is pretty easy. Um, funny, another funny story. You got time? Yeah. You got time? Yeah. Hold, okay, so. Before we get cooking, so this is pretty funny. So, uh, your mom came in today, Benjamin, and said uh, she was all excited because because TJ Maxx was open now, so she was going to go in there. And I had this mental image of her, and I said, "Well, you're going to go do some shopping." She said, "I have some returns to make." And I had this mental image of Douglas MacArthur waiting ashore in the <laughs> Philippines, getting the the microphone going. People of TJ Maxx, I have returns. <laughs> I thought I'd get that big laugh. No, no, no. no. Okay, all right, let's get to business, shall we? So <clears throat> I've got two pounds of cube steak we've got here. Now this already comes tenderized, kind of chopped up now. The, the thing about cube steak, you know, if we were just to fry this up and, and eat it, um, it would be uh, pretty, uh, pretty chewy, I found. So, um, but cook it this way, it's basically, uh, I don't know if it's braising, is that the term? I think so. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. By the way, all the recipe and everything and the directions are down below. As you're scrolling down, hit that right there. What's that? Thumbs like, up? Like. Like, and then uh, and subscribe if you haven't, so come join us. But um, So we're gonna slow cook this. So we're gonna put all this together, we're gonna brown it, and then we're gonna, uh, uh, we're going to, um, uh, slow cook it for, for an hour. So anyway, I'll take these cube steaks, put that on here, and uh, make sure they kind of, oh, look at that, we've got a little bonus one there. That's yours, Benjamin. All right. Um, and uh, gonna make sure that we, uh, we're just gonna season them a little bit with some salt and pepper. We're actually gonna use pepper this time. Your mom gave me the green light, so we've been kind of steering clear of pepper for a little while. Give them a good dusting with some, this is just regular old pink salt, Himalayan pink salt. Give them a good dusting. Now, what I'm gonna, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna sprinkle some flour over it. And uh, I'm gonna kind of basically, it's not really, I guess it's breading it, it's just coating it. And then I'm gonna kind of just make sure it's all in good. I'm gonna pat it in real good. Because flour and grease make flour. I mean, not flour, make gravy. <laughs> <laughs> that was confusing. <laughs> flour and grease together make uh, make gravy. So, so you want to put it all in there. It's not really like uh, breading it or anything, but it just pat it in there real good. Give it a good coating. And give it a little flipperoo. Yep. All right. While we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and. Uh, and we're going to do this all in one pan. So find yourself a uh, 
a pan like this that um, that basically uh, that can go in the oven. So there's nothing plastic on it, nothing that's going to melt off or cook off. So we we cook in the oven with this thing all the time. Nice little uh, uh, pan there, dish there. So I'm going to get this going here, just over like medium heat. Put a little oil in there, so it's uh, maybe a ta tablespoon or so of oil. Looks like I've been more than a tablespoon. No, a tablespoon's a lot. That looks like a lot. Just want to make sure you. And we're gonna brown the uh, brown the cube steak over. We'll go back here. We'll put a little salt and pepper on this side here. What you been up to, Benjamin? Ah, uh, work. Uh, you got a lot reading. of work from school. Yeah. yeah. Projects, labs. You, are you actually ready to get back to school? Uh, yeah. You are now. Yeah. I never thought I would ever hear you utter those words. I'm ready to just get back to normal. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, people talk about the new normal and all that. I think, you know, I, I hear that and I kind of get a little discouraged. I'm like, oh, what does that mean? You know, and I, I just think it means more awareness, you know, like at least for a while, at least this flu season, I think people will be a lot more aware about Washing touching their hands. Exactly, yeah. Just which I did, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's the new normal. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I, I got two packs of these cube steaks here, so I'm going to just kind of do all of them here and keep it all going. While that oil's heating up. Now, I'm probably only going to be able to brown uh, one batch at a time, so I'll get the first one going and then we'll come back. Uh, while we keep working on this, so yeah, I've been kind of keeping busy too, uh, getting everything together. I'm still working on those uh, prints. I'm expecting to pick up the um, the the. I've got a professional photographer friend of mine that's that's taking digital photos of mom's paintings, and she's um, she's almost got them ready. And I, I'm going to pick those up this hopefully tomorrow, and then we're going to talk with the printer and get the ball rolling on that and I'm hoping to have the Etsy site up uh, by Tuesday I think so people can start going on and ordering I think so if you're interested in the prints from the paintings I've got some other videos talking about that uh, again just sprinkle it on there and then just kind of pat it in and, and I, I really you want to make sure you use salt too because you know you use a lot of flour like that and it kind of gets a little bland I think so salt I know uh, meat needs salt yeah meat needs salt some people get a little get a little uh, wary of salt but go ahead put a little more usually at least for me it's usually better to have more than too too little yeah too I'd rather I'd rather have salty meat than unsalted meat hmm Salt well, you can always add salt, though. That's the thing. That's true. Because if you have it too salty, and it's just, I mean, I believe me, I've, I've made it before too salty, and it, you just, you can't even eat it. It's, but you can always add salt, so. Salted pork. The trick is getting the right amount, and that's probably the right amount there, just a little dusting, you know? Yeah. And, you, and you know, with all this extra flour we'll put in there as well, and get that going. So, got this, uh. Should be heating up here. We'll go ahead and toss in the first batch of these. Now, I'm gonna try to lay them in here. Ah, that's a nice sizzle. I'll lay those in there. Ideally, I'm gonna try to not turn them so much. Only turn them once. That's what we're looking for. And the beauty of this is we're gonna be cooking this all in the same pan. So. Um, and really, we'll want to be careful not to burn them, because because if it if it burns, it's just as it slow cooks in there, it's just going to magnify that. So we'll just brown these. And... Yeah, I'm 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 like I'm kind of ready to get back to get back to life, you know? Yeah. It's pretty easy. We're gonna just brown them up and uh, 
we'll add some uh, beef stock and some teriyaki and put it in the oven. Piece of cake. I'm moving around so it doesn't stick. Now, you, you, you're filming all these and doing all these. Are you paying attention to all these too? Yeah. You could be cooking for yourself one day too, you know? Soon. You can't eat sandwiches every meal. That's why I intersperse it with ramen. <laughs> Gotta have some kind of diversity in your meals. Oh, there you go. Oh my gosh. Well, that's two of the major food groups. And then, and then of course, for special occasions, I got craft dinner. <laughs> oh, shoot. Probably for Christmas, I'll have hamburger helper. So. The good stuff. Have you? You not paid attention or learned. <laughs> yeah, what I put in there, I got some extra flour here. Just kind of keep keep dusting it here. Never have too much gravy. Yeah, that's the key. Cause cause my. My mom's version, she uses water and teriyaki sauce, and and um, and then uh, I, I I I like the beef stock. It's I think it makes it's much richer, and um, and and also like adding a whole bunch, and and going a little heavier on the on the flour, so it makes a little richer gravy. I do like that because that that is the best part is the gravy. Yes, and we're gonna make we're gonna put that over uh, mashed potatoes. So, and have some mashed potatoes with it, and probably some uh, got some frozen vegetables in the freezer that we need to be using up. So, didn't quite use them all for that soup we made last week. So, yeah. And eventually, we'll get we'll kind of scrape the brown bits off here because that's gonna be extra goodness going in the in the gravy, right? Yes. Smells good. Yeah, it does. It's just looking like under here. Okay, see it kind of browning. So it is going to cook at 350 for an hour. So that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and flip. So how long was that? About three minutes. Three, four minutes. Four minutes. I mean, not burn brown. Certainly don't want to burn it. That's that looks pretty brown to me. It's pretty good. Yeah. It? But uh, definitely not pink. Yeah, not raw. You know, so that's nice brown. And and even if it's a little pink on the inside, it'll cook over an hour. You know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You enjoy that flight the other day? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that's good. So that's that's the brown and the meat. So um, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll, we'll finish this up. That's about what we're looking for with the brown meat. We'll go ahead. And I'll come back here after I've browned them all up, and then we'll we'll show you mixing up the rest, and then it's in the oven. It's really easy. So um, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So I just browned up the second batch, and again, look if if it's it's better to be. A little undercooked with these because what you don't want to do is burn them so um, if, if it's not quite I mean you're still seeing a little bit of red coming out um, that that's okay I'd rather do that I'd lean towards uh, you know it's got a nice brown on the outside there's that little bait there's yours man. that's fine yeah um, then uh, and, and I just just kind of loosen up the bottom kind of scrape the bottom a little bit up that's great. get that goodness yeah do not waste. Nope. You're gonna be good. Got the heat turned off. Oh, yep. Got the oven warming up to 350. Scraping that bottom up good. Yeah. You almost licked this up, but then you would burn your tongue. I don't know how you would do that. Because <laughs> it's gravy, man. And you just scoop it out, then eat it. It's great. Oh. That's too easy. You gotta, you gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. All right. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put these back in now. <clears throat> Toss them in. 
Put a layer down. Okay, and now I've got, again, I'm gonna use uh, carrots. So I've just got these little uh, baby baby cut carrots. Blah, blah, blah. That was now, a big one. These are, yeah, so we're actually not chopping. Put them all in. What's up with that carrot? Which one? That one's huge. Which one? Oh, this? Yeah, what is that? Yeah. You know, I, I actually, I don't think they're baby carrots like you pull them out of the ground and they're just little tiny. I think they, uh, Isn't specific? maybe they're like odd shaped and they like bore them down to the small size. I, I would explain why they're all like really similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they, they're maybe the less uh, attractive ones. They're like the belly flops. Yeah, exactly. I'm eating this carrot while I'm talking. <laughs> Just flop all that back down. I'll spread it around because... We want it all sitting in juices here. All that goodness. I used as much as that flour that was on the other plate as I could. I, want, I like the gravy. All right. So we're going to go with two, two big old heaping tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. One, two. And then we've got beef stock, not uh, broth. We're gonna go with stock here. A little richer, use this liquid measure. See how much this ends up being. Cause what I'm looking to do, I'm just mildly curious how much this is gonna end up being. Cause uh, I'd like to have it all in there. So there's one cup. Two cups, almost and that's like, much richer. Almost looks like tea. Yeah, it's like meat tea. Meat, meat, sweet tea. It's savory tea. So, <laughs> it just sounds terrible. Okay, that's three cups. I think it's gonna be four cups. Yep, that's what I thought. Which is fine, because that's gonna be lots of gravy. That's what I want. Sounds like the oven's ready. Yep. So that was a whole twenty-eight ounce or 32 ounce box of uh, beef stock. That's four cups. That's what we want. Looks about right. Hmm. Let me kind of get this meat down in, the, in there so it's packing it down. And it'll all cook as it heats up. Because I want all that juice and the cooking and, the, and then the Flour is going to pull off the grease as it cooks, and it's going to make a nice rich gravy. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, put the top on in the oven for 350 for one hour. And uh... all right, so we'll check back in an hour, see how it turns out. We'll see you in a minute. All right, so actually a couple of tweaks and I'll put this in the directions down below. So uh, the more juice you put in, I, you know, I love one of the gravy, but the more juice you put in, the longer it's gonna take to, to cook. And a um, couple of things my, my wife reminded me of. So uh, she cooks a little warmer than my mom does. So about 375 for about an hour and a half to two hours almost. Uh, would be the best with as much as I put in. You could go a little bit less with the uh, with the with the beef stock, um, and it would be a little thicker and wouldn't be as long. But man, that smells good. Oh, got some uh, mashed potatoes to go with it. Smells good, doesn't it, Ben? Yep. So I'm gonna go ahead. So the, the gravy, it's not real thick gravy, which normally like. So I mean, I suppose you could, if you really wanted to, thicken it up. And so I'm gonna put some, uh, get this here, mashed potatoes in here. Some mashed potatoes. 
some of this on here. Oh, that looks, that's not too bad. Here's the, actually that's my piece. That's daddy size piece there. <laughs> the carrots are nice and soft. A little bit of this, yeah, it's not too bad. That's, so you can see the, the flour in there, kind of gravied it up there, see, so. Yeah. And then uh, put a little bit of uh, some peas here on the side. Oh, they go all over the place, man. There we go. Let's see how tender this is. Oh yeah, look at that. Just fork tender. So, that with a little bit of mashed potatoes. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I don't wait a little longer before I test it out for y'all. But um, just like just like it says with my mom, it's it's tender, it's good, it's flavorful, it's rich with the with the beef stock. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. But again, look at the directions down below. There's a couple of tweaks I did. A little warmer oven setting for a little bit longer. Probably a little bit less juice, uh, beef stock, uh, or, or you know, cook it a little bit longer. So if you got time, I recommend you know a lot of beef stock. Let it cook a lot longer. You know, go for two hours, two and a half even. So um, anyway, any questions, Benjamin? Nope. All right. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you next time. And this is the Colonel saying over now.